improper gapping is killing your golf game and losing you shots on the course. And today I'm here with Kevin Kraft, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. We're gonna talk you through how to gap the top of your bag from your driver to your longest iron. Golfers, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel and give this video a like and you tell us in the comments how you gap your set. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahole of Second Swing Golf, joined today in the Second Swing Tour Van by Kevin Kraft, Master Club Fitter at a Columbia store here in the Twin Cities to talk about gapping, especially at the kind of the top of the set. Uh, very important piece here, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of golfers out there, maybe perhaps the more maybe casual ones specifically, just don't really uh, think about this aspect of the game and sure. building their set. But of course, it really is important in making sure really every distance you might face on the course is covered. It is. Um, the standard way of doing things is walking into a golf shop and buying a driver and buying a three wood and buying a five wood. Yeah. Okay. That might work yeah right we might get everything right we might actually get the right shaft we might get the right yeah. head we might get right everything most likely not but yeah. it is it is possible um, but we need to find out what is actually working best for somebody's game mm -hmm. uh, the easiest way to do this is to do a quick gapping session mm -hmm. right come in let's hit your current driver right let's get some numbers let's see what those numbers look like and let's bring the longest iron that you carry in and we'll then see what kind of sure. space that that creates mm -hmm. right how many yards do we have to work with right S people with slower swing speeds probably not going to have as much of a gap yeah right the bigger swing speeds we're going to have potentially huge gap between five iron and driver yeah. so um that can really determine what number of clubs we're going to do right mm -hmm. we want we don't we don't want to overload the bag we want to have every club in the bag is it's a tool they're all tools right yep. so we want every tool in the shed to have a purpose um otherwise we're just weighing our bag down right yeah. what why would we do that <laughs> doesn't, doesn't make sense to me right right i i walk as much as i can yeah and uh i don't want to carry yeah you bag, don't want right? to pay a cat ear you don't you don't want to have your bag weigh more than it needs to no I'm, <laughs> I'm, if i'm paying a caddy it can weigh whatever it wants but <laughs> well, if, yeah, it's, if, if, I'm, if I'm carrying it myself, yeah, yeah. I want it to be I want it to be nice and efficient. Right. And so, yeah. well, and one point you you made about I mean, a lot of golfers may not need to play 14 clubs, and so Absolutely. that's what Absolutely. Larry Bobka said. He plays 12 clubs now because yeah. he doesn't hit it as far, and yep. there's no reason for him gapping wise to have 14 clubs. Sure. So I think that's the important discussion to have here is you might not have a ton of speed, or maybe it is maybe you have some enough mm -hmm. speed, but just the gapping the way you swing. 12 clubs, 13 clubs might be actually what you need in your bag. And trajectory can play another big mm -hmm. um, another big part in that, right? So say, let's take somebody that does have a lot of speed. Yeah. You know, but maybe they, they have a negative angle of attack, a strong neg negative angle of attack, and they don't create a lot of trajectory. Yeah. Things are going to bunch up more yeah. when there's not as much trajectory there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the first step is finding out, you know, what the what that individual is is currently playing, right? So do they have a three they got three wood do they have four wood do they have five wood where are they comfortable with with their longest yeah fairway wood club what i want to see from a fairway wood is i want to see that that golf club create a good carry and a rollout that then that rollout number the total number then matches up really closely to what their carry number is with the driver right? yeah so effectively I want each thing to each club down to roll out to where the the club above it okay. flies. Yeah. That way we're not out there with a yardage where we go. Well, I don't have a club for this. Right. Right. right? That's not what we want. Right. So we every, want to make sure that yep. everything is covered. Yeah. You know sure. whether it, whether it's a a powerful guy trying to drive a, a par a par four. Yeah. Right. Or you know what's that layup going to look like if, yeah. if he's not going to try and drive that part mm -hmm. for? So uh, we need to know what those those numbers are are going to be. Sure. So, so we kind of already got a head start on this a little bit because the first step of this, as you mentioned, was having somebody hit their driver yep. and then their longest iron. Yeah. So for this example, you hit a driver, you mm -hmm. hit a five iron. Yep. And the numbers are up on the screen now. And so what we have here is your driver carrying two seventy to a total of 293, mm -hmm. the five iron carrying 204 to a total of 218. So okay. um, so with that said, the next piece now would be to kind of go with hit the, like the player could hit what they have in the bag now, or how would that next? So, go? yeah, I mean, I always want to compare current to to something new, right? Mm -hmm. They're coming in for a fitting, unless they're, unless they're just doing a gapping session, um, you know, that can 
unlock some some needs or yeah. or not, right? Um, but if we're if we're doing a fitting and we wanted to make sure that the gapping's good, um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna hit that driver first, yeah. and then we'll kind of compare what they've currently got to maybe what the next best recommendation right. would be. And a lot of it's gonna come out to ball speed, mm -hmm. uh, trajectory, what kind of spin rates are we getting? And then of course the, the carry and total mm -hmm. numbers. Right. Everybody likes to focus on carry and total. Yeah. I like to, to focus but, on you know, the height, spin, spin and, and the, yeah, 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 right. So yeah. I mean, like, so for the distance why, I mean, here you have, you know, whatever, nine, 293 minus 218, you know, yep. like 75 yards essentially to like mm -hmm. gap there. Yes. Um, and the carry number, you know, about 65 yards to mm -hmm. gap there. So um, in this, since if you were going to kind of gap yourself for mm -hmm. this, I guess, what's the next step? You're going to grab a couple of different woods or how's that? So, yeah, um, probably going to look at a fairway wood next and see what really works for, for either me or for the, for mm -hmm. the individual. Am I going to create enough trajectory and what do I need to put in there with that trajectory that gets me to the numbers that I'm looking sure. for? So ideally, based on the numbers we've got here, I would want probably a, a fairway wood to fly 245 ish okay. maybe something like that yeah. and then rolling out to about 270 yeah as long again as, as we can create the right trajectory we know yeah. that i'm not going to create the right trajectory because of my my crazy setup but uh, it's something i have to deal with but when we're trying to look at a at a non-super specific kind of uh, bag setup we want to be able to hit any club that's coming into the green with enough trajectory that we yeah. can have some expectation that the ball's going to stop. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, we're, we're not going to do ourselves quite as much uh, service as, right. as possible. Three wood being maybe a little bit of the exception, just because it's just not going to get as high for most people yeah. anyway. So, well, that might be a reason. Yeah, because then a lot of play, people probably play, have three woods in the bag, and they right. should not. Probably it is, they probably should have four or five woods. Do a lot of four woods. Yeah. Do a lot of four woods. Mm -hmm. And so once we've once we've then kind of identified what that needs to be. And as long as we're getting the right numbers, then we just kind of work our way down to see, you know, what what's working best. Is it going to be another fairway wood after that? Yeah. Uh, fairway wood typically is going to produce a little higher launch, a little higher ball speed. Um, those who need trajectory, I tend to do a lot more fairway woods, uh, just for that ball speed, getting up, getting that ball up in the air. Um, hybrid, then of course, you know, a little shorter shaft, a little easier to control we got to take uh, dispersion into the, right. into the equation as well. So there's a lot that can go into it, but it's all about finding the right heights, the right spins, and of course the right distances. Right. But we want everything to flow nicely through the bag so that we've got right. all those yardages mm -hmm. covered. Right, and I mean, you mentioned in this case, you might have three clubs between that gap. It yep. might be two, it might be four. That all depends on how that player's you know, delivering the club, the speed, and yep. all those metrics that you just mentioned yep. there. And it can also come down to, you know, what, where do they play, right? Yeah. What, what are their need? What are their specific needs for the places that they play their most golf, right? We want to make sure we have those things covered for them too. That's why we always harp on the fact that the interview process is so important. We're going to be talking about these things all the way through the process mm -hmm. to make sure that we haven't left any stones unturned. We want to make sure that the clubs that we're going to go with. You know, we want the numbers, we want the performance, but we also need them for specific places too. So, right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, in this case here, we want to maybe show a little bit of an example of a, of a gapping session here. We hit some sure. shots, yeah. and uh, we can just see a little bit. Again, it's, it's going to be kind of a mock gap fitting yeah. for you because I know your bag setup's a little unique. But yeah. uh, in this case, let's say I'm someone worried. has uh, 218 yards total of five iron, and they have 293 total of driver. Mm -hmm. The next thing that they would hit is probably some sort of fairy wood. Yeah, yeah. We'd start with start with a three wood, and let's see right, how that goes off the deck. Perfect. Okay. Look at that. That's a low spin, but pretty, yeah, that's that's pretty typical though for for me. I hit that one like crap, but I hit it up the middle anyway. Well, I'm not getting any trajectory. I might need to go into a four wood. <laughs> then that, that's that's the gapping session. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Kevin, three shots with the three wood. And I think right away we saw the distance was probably fine. Yeah. But yeah. distance was the, good. It covered what we wanted. The to cover. trajectory. I know you had mentioned a bunch in that intro piece as well. Um, not quite there for the trajectory piece though. New. No. No. Um, me personally, 
not freaked out by that. But if I was actually fitting somebody else who wanted an effective yeah. three wood, yeah. I would be loathe to put them into what we're seeing here. Yeah. Um, there's just not enough, there's just not enough height there. I mean, we're at 69 feet in the air. Um, it should be right. much closer to what we saw in both the five iron and the driver, 107 and right. 109 You're trying feet. to get closer to hundred feet right. in the air. We want this thing to be able to stop. Okay. Right. Unless it is just a T club. Yeah. And if it's just a T club, then that changes the conversation. Right. right. Which I know you have. So you right. have your own. And there's style. a lot of people that do that. Yeah. I get a lot of people that, that rarely hit a fairway wood off the, right. off the deck. Right. So yeah. in this case, then you're to this, to this golfer, this customer, mm -hmm. you're saying no to three wood. Would you go then just to four wood? Or so, how would you go about this? First thing I would do, um, I'm messing with a, with a Titleist TSR3. Yeah. Um, we got the ability to take it up in loft. Let's see what, okay. what taking it up in loft will do. Okay. We'll go up a degree and a half, effectively turn it into a four wood. Okay. And we'll see, see how that sure. plays out. Okay. Already some more spin. Mm-hmm. And a bunch more height. Yep. Okay. I did open the face. That makes sense. It does. All right. I okay. think that's a little bit more of that's, what that's you're really kind of the thinking. that was the best of the group there for sure. Yeah. Um, and a lot changed. Yeah. yeah. A lot did change. A lot changed. So th those are the three shots. So these are the kind of the first two there. Obviously, that last one I think is probably more indicative of yeah. sort of. Cause right, that spin climbed back up. You got to a yep. hundred feet. Yep. Um, and you're still kind of right. Cause that, uh, the, the carry with the driver was 270. Yeah. So you're right there on the doorstep yeah. at 266 I mean, that's, that's, here. So I would call that close enough. Yeah. So, close enough. and obviously uh, we're only hitting a few shots here, Yeah. but I think if you obviously hit more shots, you're going to get this up there. So yeah. Launch um, angle came up, uh, almost the same amount as what the, the loft change was. And, uh, and the yeah. height was, the height obviously was, was yep. way better. So in this instance, for anybody that's looking to, to hit this into a green, yep. this setup as a four wood, 16 and a half mm -hmm. degrees, way better for their bag than, yeah. than the other. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. So, so now the next gapping piece, right? So you hit this one, you yep. carried it 246 yep. to 265. So now between kind of that five iron at totaling at 218 and then the carry at 246, you have probably at least one more club that you got to work in. Yeah. There. So, you know, my, my best guess here is probably going to be something carrying around 230 if we're getting the right, the right okay. trajectory and then, and then rolling out from there. Okay. And then from there it's, it is, it's questionable whether we're, we have enough space to throw another club in there or yeah. not. Yeah. Right. Um, that ide might ideally be. you can do like a carry, like you said, a carry 230 to 245 and then mm -hmm. a, maybe a carry of 217 to 230. Yeah. Um, um, might not be perfect in that sense though. Yes. Yes. And it's, again, it might come down to the conversation of, do well, we have a specific need for right. this specific shot? Yeah. Or um, do you value having an extra wedge more than yeah. Top of the bag. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, so let's maybe try and find a, if it's a hybrid or if maybe a club that would kind of be the next piece there below yeah. the three yeah. or the four wood here. Yeah. Ooh, that could be good. Yeah. Okay. So cool. this is basically a three and a half hybrid, I guess, is what we kind of called it. Yeah, it's pretty close. I mean, depending on which company you're going with, 21 or 22 or yeah, yeah, you know, can be can be the four hybrid. This was a this is what we had. It was a 19 yeah. degree. Um, I've got it cranked up to 20.5, so we're really close to that four yeah. hybrid number. So let's actually just look at all the numbers. So this is the the hybrid, and we were talking about. Let's get this out of there. Yep, that yeah. one that one can go. That's yeah, not well, useful. We're, I mean, we're just going to delete it completely, actually. Okay. So. We're comparing this, this is basically the three and a half wood or four wood yep. to this three hybrid, three and a half hybrid. So yep. here's the findings we had here. Um, we found it basically a sort of a, actually kind of in this instance works nicely with above the five iron. It does. Um, it did not give us as much 
coverage as I would like to see. I and mean, we've got a 14 yard gap there between right. the, the rollout and the carry on the three wood. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, there's, there's probably actually a good case to be made for one more golf club in there. Right. And my guess is that's probably going to end up being the five wood. The five wood? Probably. Interesting. Cause probably. yeah. Cause I think, cause with this club, you got everything you needed to, right? This yeah. is, this is the great, this is a great option for that club after the five iron here. Sure. Absolutely. Um, where you got, you, you carry, started basically right at 219, yep. and then you carried it to 230. So there's basically, if you could find a club that carries 230, it rolls out to 245, yeah. that's the perfect club. And yeah. if we think, do we, do, we, do we think we can try hit a 5 wood and get there? I, I think we can. I, I, think I we definitely try. think we can. I've, we got a, I've, got a, I've got an idea in my you head. Have? Okay, that's perfect. Yeah. Let's try it. <laughs> a good start little pull little pull which took down the spin a tad probably it did. and maybe the carry probably went, a little, but probably went a little further i also didn't hit it quite quite perfect i'm choking down a little bit on this guy i don't okay. have a five wood shaft so I'm just, yeah. oh i see I'm, so you hit the I'm three blaming, wood shaft I'm, I'm really good at blaming the equipment and i do that for my customers as well we're always going to blame the equipment as much as we can now if this one turns over we should be in good shape all right we're looking like how we about two thirty on the number? We, we might have found the the money, the money club here. Two thirty on the number. Oh, block that one. Well, I got all the shots today, man. Well, lefts, rights. Yeah. Okay. A little miss to the took, right. Took a couple yards. I only have one more here, just to hammer home that two thirty. Yeah, that two thirty. Two twenty five. Okay. All right. Okay. That was maybe even a, even more of a miss there. Too, yeah, but yeah, it's I funny that you still did catch. Out. I caught behind it just a hair. Yeah, I mean, we saw that spin rate drop. So, yeah, I mean, look at this. So here we go. Here's our clubs, right? Five iron, two hundred five yep. to two nineteen. The three and a half hybrid, two nineteen to two thirty two. This one was two twenty I mean, on average two twenty seven to two forty five. Yep. Okay. Granted, there might have been a miss in there that knocked down the spin. So bit, probably yep. we'll give we'll we'll generously say two thirty. Okay. To 245. Yeah. yeah. Then the 246 to 265, and then the driver, 270 to 293. That's pretty well gapped. That's pretty good. I got to tell you, that's pretty well gapped. So in this instance, this player plays kind of a almost a three and a half wood and a mm -hmm. five wood, and then down to a three and a half hybrid, or three hybrid moved up and loft a degree and a half down, then to five iron. Yeah. Do me a favor. Yeah. Click on the five wood. I want to see one thing here real quick. Yeah. Open it up. Yep. Yep. So let's take let's take that guy out. Yeah. The last the last That was one. the one you definitely kind of missed yeah. a little bit. Cuz what I saw there like when we hit on the when we hit it off the mats, right? Yep. You catch behind it and that spin just drops. Right. So looking at the the ones that were hit a little more solid. Yeah, I had one that pushed a little bit so it was a little higher spin. Yeah. Then but, you also pulled you that, kind of the one yeah, so it kind yeah, of But that tough. spin rate, you know, I want to make sure that spin rate's up there. We look at the trajectories, right? So 107, yep. 110, 106, 102 yep. and 109. Guess what? We're getting we're getting good trajectory, yep. pretty equal trajectory all the way through. Yep. And then landing angles, all right? Landing angle on the driver's fine. 3 wood Okay, uh, just, just a tiny bit shallow, but not terrible. Yeah. Uh, 43 on the five wood, 46 on the three hybrid, 40, almost 46 on the five iron. Yeah. Those numbers are pretty good. We should yeah. have the expectation that these shots are going to stop coming into the greens. Yeah. And then the last thing, too, to touch on is how the spin also kind of gradually increases yes. with these clubs still. Yes. So the driver, Absolutely. 23. Yep. The three wood, th uh, 3,000, 3,200. And then you yep. do get near 4,000 with the hybrid and then kind of near 4,000 with the five iron. But, I spin hybrids a lot. But, I don't know. Exactly. So <laughs> this then kind of to, to summarize the whole thing here. Yep. So we talked about at the beginning of gapping, you need a, a club for every yardage that you will face yes. out there, right? Yes. That you theoretically could hit it to. Yes. Um, I mean, this, this particular gapping scenario for this type of player is perfect. I mean, you have each of the clubs set. Now this might not be the, the gapping situation where you know, three wood, five wood, three hybrid, five iron that works for you. Right. But making sure you have all those numbers covered is ultimately the goal. And that's what we accomplished here. Yeah. And that's, that's the other thing about all the technology we've got in all these clubs and all the adjustability we have in all these clubs, we can dial things in. We didn't have to go away from the three wood 
initially. We just mm-hmm. had to make sure that it was set up properly. Right, right. Right? Exactly. So, you know, if you're somebody that, oh, I got to have a three wood. Okay, fine. No problem. Let, let's work within that three wood. Yeah. See if we can make that three wood work as well. Right positively for you as possible. Right. And the other thing too, you mentioned, we were at the, you the, the TSR three head. Yes. We could have gotten a TSR two and perhaps could have, yes, launched absolutely. a little higher, sure. but we of course sure. we went up in loft instead. Yeah. But you know, apples and oranges accomplishing, they're both fruit, you know? Yeah. So uh, I think that kind of wraps it up though. I mean, yeah. improper gapping is going to lose you shots. Proper yes. gapping is going to give you a shot to hit at every number. So yes. uh, golfers, make sure you come in and get your gapping figured out at second swing. One of our expert fairs will go through a gapping session with you like this. Dial your game in, make sure that ultimately you can play the best golf possible on the course. So Kevin, thanks for the demonstration. Uh, Very important topic to cover today. So uh, I think golfers will like this one a lot.